For a long time, paints were only made using uh, natural materials. I think one of the great joys in life is adding color to any object or a surface. It's like a splash of color can make um, a lot of difference. And today's tutorial explores the process of making paint as our ancestors did in Stone Age times. So stick around and I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of making watercolor paints from natural pigments. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chotsna from Lost in Colors and today's tutorial is all about making watercolor paints using natural pigments. This is the third and last tutorial of a three-part series on foraging, pigment and paint making process. If you haven't watched part one and part two, then do watch uh, the videos and the link to those videos are in the description box below. Also, if you're new, then remember to click on the subscribe button. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started with making watercolor paints from natural pigments. So before we begin with the process of making paint, we require a few tools for doing that. Um, to begin with, we need a surface where the grinding and the mulling process takes place. So I use a simple uh, glass um, kitchen cutting board, which is designated for doing uh, this purpose, for this um, uh, thing only. I don't use it for um, cutting vegetables or anything else. So now if you don't have a glass uh, surface, you could also use marble. Um, or um, I also sometimes use this piece of slate. So this is like an improvised um, grinding and mulling surface that I have. Then for mixing the paint and the binder, you need some kind of a knife. I have a palette knife, a spoon for measuring, uh, some kind of a scraper um, and a glass muller. Now if you don't have a glass muller, you could also use simple rounded natural stones for the grinding and mulling purpose and that works pretty fine as well. There are a few other ingredients that uh, you require for making paints, um, especially for making the binder solution because you need something to bind your pigments with. So I use gum arabic. Um, this is how the gum arabic uh, looks in its natural state. They are these uh, beautiful golden yellow amber colored um, crystals. But um, I prefer using a powdered gum arabic. Then I use honey as a humectant. Are you also going to need a natural preservative? Um, so I prefer using clove oil, a few drops of it, um, which prevents the formation of mold or any bacterial growth in the binder solution. And of course, distilled water for making your binder solution. Um, another additional thing that one must never forget is the personal protective equipment or safety gear. So always make sure you wear a safety mask to prevent inhaling any dust that arises as a result of um, the paint making process. So self-protection must never be neglected. Okay, so now we will get into the process of making paint. So in this tutorial, I will be using um, a red ochre that I had a forage earlier this year on Tenerife. So we are going to be making traditional watercolor paint. Um, so I'll begin with placing a very small quantity of the pigment on my work surface. I have a glass uh, grinding and mulling surface. You put it very gently because you don't want to aerosolize your pigment. And make sure that you don't have any children or pets while you're making uh, paints. And this is just a safety message. So once you have placed the pigment onto your work surface, you add a binder solution. Now, the binder contains uh, gum arabic, which is the sap from acacia tree. Uh, it contains a bit of honey and uh, clove oil as a natural preservative. So after adding the binder, you mix the pigment, the dry pigment and the binder really nicely together before you begin the process of mulling. So using a glass muller, you begin in circular motion and you 
you just move around in circular way or whichever way you feel comfortable. This is to ensure that you are integrating the binder and the pigment really well together. So I, after one round, I actually, a few rounds, I put the, pull the pigment together in the center of my work surface and I repeat the process. So um, till I observe a change in the consistency of my, um, of my paint. Now the change in consistency is also because as you're doing, there is a bit of evaporation of the water and the pigment and the binder are coming really well together. So once the paint is made, you can fill it up and then you can swatch the paint and see how it has turned out. Making your own paints is all about exploring, making mistakes, learning new things and um, allowing yourself to grow in your own unique way. Every time I make paint from natural material, I learn something new. I really look forward to keep exploring and letting my curiosity guide me further. It feels beautiful to be part of the whole process. I hope this gives you inspiration to try it out for yourself. If you have any questions, then kindly leave your comments below. You can also visit my blog to read more on this topic. And lastly, remember to give a thumbs up if you like the video and do subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Until then, take care and have fun.